Okay, we are ready. Um, well, after some small issues, we are here and um, I know there's, uh, there won't be people seeing us online, but um, whenever, if you are watching this, just know that you can always um, comment and, and write questions and we will go back to them. So here we go. Um, this is the lunch break. Uh, we are lunch break in Las Comadres is a series of conversations we are having in these weird, interesting times. And we are bringing experts from all the topics that we can think of that might be useful for us all, basically. Um, we are having these lunch breaks every day at noon and Today, I'm super excited about the topic today because we are going to be talking about moving your retail business online. And for that, we have um, three of our comadres. Uh, our first comadre is Jakey, Jakey Brink. Uh, she is an artist and a graphic designer, and she's also the owner of Lore and Lotus. Lotus? How do you pronounce it? Uh, Lauren Lotus. Lotus, okay. I was just making it Spaniard. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Madeline Bustamante is also here. She is the owner of an online stationery and gift store, which is called um, Colorful Cute. And she also, I would say that she is, she is an expert on that, but she wouldn't say, but she is an expert. <laughs> and she teaches women who, how to set up their stores online and grow and engage community on social media as product-based businesses. So perfect for our conversation. And we have Sofia Del Rivero. She is a visual artist and she's also the owner of Artbox uh, Miami, which is uh, an art school in Miami specialized in creative workshops for children. Which and I adults. love. <laughs> ah, and adults now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> great, great to know actually. Um, so, this is how we are going to roll. First of all, uh, as always, we like just um, setting our ground and I would like you to tell me what are you grateful for at this moment? All right, I'll go first. Um, I'm grateful for not having to commute. <laughs> Um, it has been amazing to not spend hours of my day in the car every day, yeah. going to and from work, taking my kids to and from school and after school activities. So I am grateful to just not have to deal with the car. Mm -hmm. I'll go next. Um, I'm actually grateful for a lot of things. I think we're really lucky with the weather we're having these, these weeks. Even if we are locked in, we can like step outside. It's not, it hasn't been raining, which is great. Um, I have free time now, which is great for me because I get to paint more at home. Um, and it's just like a little, I mean, even though this, this awkward time might be extended, it's like a little breather for me. Like I get to relax and just like do things that really calm me down. And when I'm, when I'm kind of like too focused on my work, I, I, I tend to like lose a little bit of like my creative outlet space. So, so I'm super grateful to have like a moment to get to do that again. Um, I am on the same page as Sophia. I'm really grateful right now for like not having to feel like I'm having to hustle so much for once. Like it's nice to be able to take a break and it, it's like the world is slowing down a little bit and I'm actually enjoying it a lot. Um, I'm a homebody, so that helps. <laughs> so I'm pretty grateful for that. <laughs> And um, I'm also a homebody, and so I'm grateful that I have a beautiful house I can stay in. And also, it's uh, it's been holiday in Spain where I am, um, so like everything is helping me to just settle a little, which is um, very necessary. Okay, um, I think it will be very useful for everybody to have, um, I know I gave some super short presentations, but I would love to know a little bit more about your business, what you do, and especially in the context of um, online uh, retail and, and where are you at this moment. So, uh, for example, Jackie, how, what would you tell us about your business? 
Um, okay. Uh, Lauren Lotus is an online retailer. Uh, I sell, we sell handmade um, jewelry, home decor, and accessories. Everything is ethical, sustainable, uh, eco-conscious. Um, all of the artisans are paid a living wage, um, and I only source from brands that have the same kind of uh, principles. So it's, you know, it's about making the world a better place, but with still providing really beautiful things. Um, we're about a year old officially um, in May, <laughs> I guess, so almost. And uh, we're entirely online. I'm still kind of tweaking the website all the time, but it's, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful job. <laughs> Uh, I love what I do. It's been a passion of mine for like 15 years, and this is the first year I'm actually doing what I really wanted to do with my life. So I'm very excited to to be able to share that and uh, and tell you guys about it. So yeah, it sounds beautiful. That's where we're, we're at. sharing the details. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Sophia? Um, so I'm the owner of Artbox. It's an art studio. It's in Coconut Grove in Miami. Um, really, we have nothing to do with online stuff. <laughs> like everything that we do is just art um, lessons in the studio. So it started off being just for kids. We opened five years ago. Um, and it was more of like geared towards after school activities, but then it grew into like birthday parties, camps. And then we had a lot of adults asking if we can do adult classes. So now we have a really great adults program. Um, we've, I've collaborated with a lot of the comadres who come and do um, workshops as well. Um, but really it's just a way to like support anything. Uh, I think especially like for local artists that just want to showcase what they do. It's a great space for anything creative. We're not like limited to any, any style of art. It's just like open to everything, um, and all ages. So now with this thing going on, um, I've, I've kind of had to just start thinking of different ideas outside the box to just like move it to things. I mean, to different ways that I can sell things either online or like provide classes kind of like this, like live sessions. So I've never had to do this before. I'm so bad with technology. So this is just like really new to me and I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to try new things, but <laughs> it's like, it's way out of my comfort zone. So, so yeah. <laughs> I'm, sh I'm sure so many people listening to us relate <laughs> with yeah. what you said. So I think it's perfect that we are all here. And Madeleine, tell us about, tell us about your business. So Colorful Q is a gift and stationery store. Um, it's now three years old. It is online, but I also, before COVID, was doing a lot of, uh, bless you, that is my son. <laughs> uh, I was doing a lot of anime and comic conventions and some local markets here in Miami. Um, so I've been trying to move away from the shows anyway, because they are exhausting. And so I kept putting a lot more uh, work into online. Um, and it's actually, the timing has been fantastic because um, this, you know, the shift online right now has actually been great in that there's more people online, more people are shopping online. Um, and so, you know, kind of being able to meet people where they are um has been fantastic and so i've actually seen one of the best like my march sales were up like i think almost 300 percent compared to last year and my april sales are also like up through the roof as well just because it's like everybody's online and i know a lot of people are economically impacted but a lot of people aren't and the people that aren't are the ones that are still shopping and they're like desperate to keep themselves and their loved ones entertained so mm -hmm. So if we, I can imagine that um, there are different levels of moving your business, your retail business online, and we'll try to cover the different levels. But in general, um, what would you say is the main challenge that these retailers might be facing? There's two. Number one is the biggest problem that people have is letting people know that they exist online. Right. Mm -hmm. So driving traffic, whether it's to your social media <laughs> presence or to your actual physical website, like letting people know, like, hi, I exist. I'm here um, is the number one challenge. It's a lot like physical spaces, too. But online, it's even more magnified. You are like a tiny little grain of sand. Um, 
So that would be the first one. And then, you know, the second one is also just the technicalities of it. Um, I'm sure Jackie's already dealt with this because she does have an online store, but there is that work that you have to do to, you know, photograph your products. Do you have to learn how to do copywriting or find somebody to do it for you? You've got to like get your stuff on the website and all of those things. Um, and that's another challenge that a lot of people I think run into and kind of like that freezes a lot of people, the, the prospect of having to build this website. Mm -hmm. Yaki, what would you like to share? What do you think are the main challenges? Um, I completely agree with Madeline. Um, the technical back end of building a website is so much more intense than like you expect when you first go into it. I actually am very fortunate that my background has always been in like online marketing and like website building. So I, I already kind of had that um, back end knowledge, which was very helpful for me. But even with that, it's a challenge to constantly, you know, like she said, photographs. You, you have to know that if you're choosing like the wrong backgrounds, you're gonna spend hours editing them. Like, so, you know, like things like that you don't learn until later. Cause you're like, oh, everything needs a white background. And then you're like, oh my God, white backgrounds take more editing than anything in the world. And if you're not a graphic designer and you don't have experience in that, you're gonna really be like, why did I do this? And it's uh, copywriting is a whole other thing. You could be a very passionate, creative person and maybe not be like a skilled writer. Um, and that affects a lot of your content and what people buy. I know I struggle with that. I even had a con uh, content writer at one point. Um, so you're wearing many, many hats. Um, but it is completely doable if you really know, you really know your products and you, you know your target audience. That helps a lot. Um, uh, and that would be my thing would be like, know what you're photographing and make sure that you're not making it harder for yourself. Um, and know your program because all of the different websites that sell online have different code. They have different methods of updating. They have different themes. Um, if you're like me and you're a designer, you like really hate that all of these themes like really limit your design capability unless you hire coders because some use CSS, some use HTML, some use Java, some use Liquid. Like it's all different scripts and it's a whole other language, literally. Um, so that's something to take into consideration, but that shouldn't stop you. It, there's absolutely help for everybody everywhere online. Mm -hmm. Sophia, what are the main challenges you are facing right now? Yeah, so for me, just to like follow up on what Jackie was saying, like with the website that I have for Artbox, um, I was lucky enough that I worked with Amber from the Comadre. She helped me design my website. Well, actually redo the whole thing and she did a great job. And I, I mentioned to her that I'm not like a coder. Or I don't know how to do any type of web design. So she set it up in a Squarespace format. No, is that what it's called? Yeah, Squarespace. Yeah. Um, so it's super easy to edit. And so now with all these changes going on, I can just like log in. And even if I don't know how to do something, it's really simple to Google and figure it out or just like try a few times and like, like within a few minutes, I can just get the hang of it and, and switch things around. So I've had to be updating it just with the whole change of, of this whole thing. We're not doing classes anymore at the studio. So now I have to like sell like uh, take home kits that kids can do at home or like things like that. Um, and then another challenge I think is for me, especially or for any business, I think that has things online and offline is to kind of get them to match. Like you don't want your, your products online or like anything you have online to be completely different than what you're offering offline. So in my case, since what I sell are basically like experiences and like teaching artistic skills in a studio to show, oh, and our, also Artbox, anybody that has taken a class with us kind of gets the feel of mm, like the vibe that we are. It's like a super homey space. Like it's like a really small studio, but it's super friendly. Like people can show up and not have any experience. And it's just like the teachers are just very passionate, like me being one of them. And then my anybody that comes in to teach my staff is great. So the whole atmosphere is like really laid back and loose and friendly. And then to transmit that to something that's like tangible and that you're trying to sell online is really hard for me, I think. So just staying on brand, I guess, is like a short way of saying it. Um, anything that I sell online and then, and then either ship or sell to somebody's house, I want them to hold it in their hands and like still get that same feeling. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the challenge I'm facing now. 
So then, <clears throat> sorry, going to the, to the process, um, if somebody is in, well, in a similar situation as, as you, Sophia, and, and, or owns a retail, a physical or in-person retail store, and wants to put it online, what would you say is the first step they should be taking? Um, like in my case, I mean, the first thing I did was basically reach out to, um, well, like I was saying, bef like I was saying before, um, homey is like a word that I use a lot to describe our classes and like our studio and the whole art box brand. Um, because I really just by getting to know our, my students and, and even their parents when they're kids, like we get onto the basis like to the point that we're just texting and emailing and like we basically become friends like it's not even like a like a client you know like a like a employee type of thing it's more of like a friend um atmosphere so the first thing i did was reach out to them and kind of like send something really personal and then little by little like just to my to my newsletter to anybody that follows us on social media as well um and just little by little get more of a response and then i do more like promoting and things like that with ads which i mean also now since money is not flowing <laughs> i have to like be resourceful but i think that social media helps a lot um so that's kind of what i've been sticking to and my response really i would say like 80 percent has been people that i know like people that are trusted clients of mine that have taken classes with us more so than like strangers Mm -hmm. Marlene, I know you want to say something. Yeah, I would, I mean, if, if you're in a situation where like, okay, you don't have much of an online presence and like you're, in, you're one of these people where like you have a brick and mortar or you do, um, I know a lot of businesses that do events, right? So like the majority of their sales are from like local markets and stuff, right? I have a lot of friends who sell jewelry at like market for makers and all that kind of stuff. So if you're in that situation and like you're really trying to like, okay, now we have no, no markets, we can't do things at our box, we can't do these kinds of things. Definitely the first step would be to start to reach out to your clientele. And hopefully you've been getting your clientele to like join your email list, follow you on social media and all that stuff. So the first thing is to reach out to them and just give them the information like, hey, this is what's going on. Yes, we've like had to cancel everything, but we are either we do have an online presence or we are establishing an online presence. Um, we would love some feedback from you guys and we'd love some input on what you'd like to see online. This is some ways that you can connect with us. And I would actually really start to make it a point to connect with them online through social media and or email on a regular basis as you build up your website. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna build like a mini launch. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you wanna kind of like build like a little mini grand opening of your website and your online services. Um, even if you've already been selling online, even if you've already been offering these things online, like just like you would for your physical store, like turn it into an event and like make that something that people can look forward to, especially right now, like everybody's looking, everybody's doing these Zoom happy hours, everybody's doing like all of these hangouts and all this stuff online. You could actually capitalize on that and get everybody psyched up for like an online grand opening. And Sophia, I think for you, that would be so much fun, like to create some kind of paint night or something mm -hmm. where like that's the grand opening of the online experience of Artbox where like you can ship out little kits and everybody's going to work on the same project at this hour on this day. And this is going to be our grand opening of our online thing. I want you to know, it's so funny that the two of you are on here. There was um, a really interesting article that came out last week and it showed the top 100 increasing categories in e-commerce and the top 100 decreasing categories. And one of the top categories is arts and crafts kits. Like it is the growth in that category is through the roof. On the decline, everything jewelry, everything apparel, everything accessories, right? Because people aren't going out. But when you look at the opportunity that exists, even for jewelry and stuff like that, like if you can teach people how to do like a simple jewelry piece and you can sell the kits, that's an evergreen project that lives on your thing. And you could kick that off with like a really fun Facebook live event. But I think that's like the big thing is you would want to make sure that people know that you haven't disappeared. 
that you are here for them and you'd like to know what, how, how can I help you? Like, how can I serve you? Like, what can I do for you? The whole thing about like keeping your customer in mind is, is essential for every business. It doesn't change for online. You've got to know who your ideal customer is and you've got to always think and operate with them in mind. So you got to put yourself in their shoes. What are they going through right now? What are they like? Are they bored? Are they stressed? Like, what is it? And how can I, how can I help them? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I would, that's the first step, I think, is really just dig into that community and pull them together. I really like the idea. What are your thoughts, Jackie? Um, what would you start with? Um, I completely agree with her. I actually struggle a lot with connecting with my customers. Um, I do think I have a very strong target audience in mind when I'm working on that, but I just, I struggle with the actual like application of it. But as far as like starting online, um, well, what I did was, I mean, you establish what you want to do with your business first. <laughs> when I started, I just started. So it, uh, it kind of, uh, was a while in practice, but I had to do a lot of research on which platforms I wanted to use because a lot of them didn't meet my needs or my um, design expectations or whatever. And, and I thankfully, like I said, I had the background of doing a lot of web design beforehand. So I kind of already knew a lot of the programs that are available, um, but that will really kind of limit you and your sale capability in the long run. Right now I run on Shopify. Um, I don't know if it's exactly the best platform, but it is one of the easier <laughs> ones because it keeps like all your inventory and everything in there uh, in one, which is really, really handy. Um, I know Squarespace is a good one too if you're selling like um, smaller catalogs. So if you're not selling more than 20 items, like that's Squarespace is beautiful for that. And by the way, I wanted to tell you, Sophia, I love so much that you took live workshops and turn them into kits. I mean, that's genius. That's so resourceful. That's brilliant. You're literally adapting to the times like rapidly. And I'm very proud of that. Like it's, I can't wait to go look up Artbox right now and like figure out what crafts I'm going to do next. <laughs> So what I did was I figured out like where my platform was, what I was selling, what program was going to work best for that. So that was more thought based and like technical. And then I've been working from there and then I'm trying to connect with the clientele because I didn't have any before. I didn't have anybody to talk to because I didn't have any shop before this. So I literally just started online and it's that's the challenge like really being on social media always being there always reaching out trying to talk to people trying to grow your email list um that's a big part of it and i'm still working on it every day it's still like how do i get a little bit further do i need more seo do i need to change the content of this do i need to update that um and and so that's kind of where i started it was more the picking the parts first and then diving into it mm -hmm. a little different <laughs> yeah you also, you actually, you mentioned one of the things that I wanted to ask you about, which is the, the platforms, because um, I really think that sometimes, and I know you can Google this, but I just still think that it's much better when somebody directly recommends you and just um, kind of summarizes and helps you go through tons and tons of information that are out there. So I was thinking, how, how could, how would you help somebody choose the the platform the e-commerce platform why should be choosing one and not another what what it depends on what are your thoughts um, on that? okay so there's a couple of like there's a million web platforms uh, as we know there's um but there's higher end ones and there's lower end ones um and that also is depending on, of course on your um skill to design your own website and whether or not you want to design your own website because that's a totally different experience on its own. Um, lower end, really easy to use, but not necessarily the best for inventory is like Wix and Weebly. They're very user friendly. So anyone with no design skill can go in and build something, but they don't really have as good of a, like a shop interface. Um, it's a little bit more difficult. Then you get into like Squarespace, which is like the middle uh, Squarespace is really good for uh, simple websites, easy design, small shops. Uh, it's very focused on graphics and pictures, so it's very visual, it's very beautiful, very clean. And then you get into things like Shopify, 
uh, WordPress with WooCommerce, that's if you really want to do a lot of blogging, then you need a WordPress account because that's the best for blogging. They have all the apps, all the background things you can imagine. Um, they also have WooCommerce and stuff, but that you have to know how to use WordPress, which is a whole other interface again. Uh, a lot of apps that can break every time you update and you have to update WordPress and its apps constantly. It's like every other week there's an update. Um, so you have to be aware of that. Then there's big commerce. There's another e-commerce and Shopify. And those are specifically made for shops um, and like online inventory. And you can go like as big or as small as you need and they have specific themes. Um, they're fairly easy to design uh, if you are happy with the basis theme. If you want to like actually change a lot of theme, then you maybe need some assistance or you need to learn how to liquid code. Um, that's where I'm at right now. I use a simple Shopify. I have a, I bought a theme for it. I've updated the theme to all my colors and specifications. Um, but I also have a different website that runs on WordPress. So I'm still trying to figure out which one works better right now. Um, they both run like the shop part of my WordPress is run with show it, but the shop part is run with Shopify. So they're both Shopify, mm -hmm. but different platform. So one is really beautiful because I have endless design opportunity. And the other one is limited to just like the Shopify theme. So I'm trying to figure out which one like works better for actual sales. Um, I like Shopify in the sense that all of the inventory is in one place. It's very easy to keep it all together. It comes with, a, you get a little like card reader, like free, first month's free. Um, ease of use is pretty good for it. And it's made for shops, which is unlikely. Those are just, those are just landing page shops. You don't, you don't want to like actually shop on there necessarily. Um, but what does Madeline use? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so for platforms, I keep this very simple when people talk to me about it. Um, if you're interested in an e-commerce store, Shopify, period, end of story. Um, you have to, sh you have to keep your focus on what your focus is. So even if you create a shop and you want to have a blog for your shop, the blog is not going to be like the main thing it, and it doesn't have to be fancy and Shopify does have a blogging feature it does. in it. Yes, yeah. it does. So for me, if you're going to have e-commerce, it's Shopify. The other thing about Shopify that I really like is Shopify has fantastic integration for point of sale businesses as well. So for yes. example, for me, when I do shows, I can actually manage my inventory where I can transfer inventory from my online store into a pop-up shop location. And I yeah. can manage all of my inventory so that I'm not in a show selling stuff that is also selling online. Exactly, which, it's it's an yeah. uh, instant update. Exactly. I do the same. I was doing stall, uh, shows as well, but I, I wanted to be online exactly. and I only want to be online and now I have to. So, <laughs> right. so Shopify to me, if you're doing e-commerce at all is, is the one. Now Squarespace is great for service-based businesses. So if mm -hmm. you have a service-based business and that is your main goal, I would recommend going to Squarespace and you can integrate a small e-commerce shop on there, which like for Sophia, I would say Squarespace is a perfect solution for her because she has her service-based business is the core of her business, but she can create a small catalog that's efficient and it works. The great thing about both of these things is that they integrate beautifully with lots of apps and services. So both of them integrate fantastically with most major email service providers. Um, most of them integrate, like Shopify has fantastic apps for everything that you could possibly need, which for me is extremely important because most people don't have a coding background and I don't want people to get deterred. I didn't have a coding background, right? And so I don't want people to get deterred and say like, oh, but I don't really know what to do with the website. It's fine. Shopify, do it's all what you see is what you get, WYSIWYG. It's all drop and play. And then yeah. you have apps to help you like create better things. So like mm -hmm. fantastic pop-ups, you can have apps for your reviews, you can have, and it doesn't really like clutter the website. If you keep it simple and you keep it, you know, to like your essentials. So I, I recommend Shopify for e-commerce, Squarespace for everything else. Um, and just like, just to not keep people overwhelmed and just let them like, this is how you can get started. Yeah, Later I on, agree if, with you. Yeah. The other ones are just don't bother. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm a big fan so of, of using what you have and maxing it out. And then once you max it out, 
then research some options, you know? So like if you've maxed out everything you can possibly do with Shopify, one, I would be amazed because like I know tons, I know a lot of e-commerce owners. I'm part of a few e-commerce groups and like some of these guys have huge businesses and they're all run on Shopify. I can guarantee you that the vast majority of the websites that you are buying from online are powered by Shopify. They are. You can tell in their, in their checkout. It's like yeah. almost every other one, literally. Exactly. So, you know, I think you max it out and then like you can buy a theme, right? So even with the free themes on Shopify, you can do so much. I can't really, instead of like going crazy and like stressing about all this stuff, you can just buy a, a, a theme that has a little bit more options, a little bit more customization that is still really easy for you to do in Shopify, yeah. right? So no, like Shopify is perfect for that. Their templates are super, super easy. They're super clean. You really can't mess them up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. I think that's, that's, that was nice and simple. Um, I also think uh, I was thinking about a, a checklist. So what are the things? And, and Sophia, is that fine? If that's fine with you, I would love to use your business as an example. So what would be the checklist um, to be done when you are starting to, to move your business online? a uh, checklist of like actual things like that I'm yeah. selling or? Yeah, what I'm suggesting is that we use your example. So your business is you are now starting to move your business online and, yeah. and with Jackie and Madeleine, maybe we can, we can oh, fill yeah. out the, the checklist of things that you should be doing before you launch or while you launch. Yeah. So I was, oh, okay, okay. yeah, so like I would first of all start with number one, just getting the word out to people that you are creating an online experience, right? And you can do it through social and you can do that through email lists. Um, and then number two, you already have a website platform. It's already done. And I, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't bust your brain over that. And by the way, quick side note to this, if you're a business that does not have a website, but you really need to start, because I know there's a lot of people right now that they need income like yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't be afraid if you've got a, if you've got a decent Instagram following, don't be afraid to like post something on Instagram and be like, DM me for to purchase. Like, it's fine. Like you don't need to have the website all set up and whatever to make sales online guys. Like I, I know that there's people who are in really tight positions right now and really just, they need the income ASAP, you know, do the hangout, do a live on your Facebook page. And like people can order on like, comment to order and like let them do that and then send them an invoice through paypal or through square whatever you already have because i know you're already accepting payments like don't stress it that much but number one definitely get the word out that you're creating an online experience and then number two decide how you want to sell online right so if, are you going to do a platform and which one and then number three i would definitely create a quick collection like a capsule collection to start with um, I honestly, I would say five products to like, that's 10, what I was thinking too. Five yeah, to 10. five to 10, like that's it. Um, and get your photos. Don't kill yourself on photos right now. We're just starting. The point is to get two or three of each item. Yeah. Just, and they don't have to be super crazy professional. Like just do your best with what you've got. We are all in limited resources. Like, so right now, if, if it means going outside and finding a shady spot and like a cute little table with a tablecloth on it, do it, it's fine, right? Like this is just to get going ASAP, right? Later on, yes, you wanna invest in a light box and you want your backgrounds and you want all of that stuff cool. But for like, let's get this going ASAP, a nice little window is gonna help you a thousand times and yes. you just do your best. So you take your photos, you wanna create titles for your products that are not vague, this is, I, I love my artist friends, but I've seen so many of my artist friends are guilty of this. They create these product titles and like these beautiful, amazing, like super poetic titles and they don't tell you what it is, <laughs> right? So create super clear, clear and concise titles. What are you selling? And then a little description that really, again, put yourself in the mind of the consumer. So when you're going online, what do you want to know? So make it clear, like, what is it that you're, what is it in, that's in this product? If it's a physical product, what are the dimensions? What is it made of? You know, you're going to want to weigh stuff. So if you, you especially if you're going to be shipping, you want to get like the one thing I would tell you to buy for sure and have it shipped to your house ASAP is a little uh, postal scale because you're going to need that. 
And then just, you know, like start putting all of that stuff up, build the hype, build your hype and, and launch and have your grand opening online, you know? And you can do that in two to three weeks and you're done. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I would say that's exactly right. Yeah. And would you like to add um, something on, on that, Jackie? Um, yeah, like she was saying earlier, stick to your brand, know your brand colors, your brand feeling. Um, so that's like the verbiage that you use, it's the colors that you use. Um, stick to that as much as possible, even in your descriptions. If you're always playful and homey, always use conversation like you're talking to somebody you know, like a friend. Don't be too formal if that's if you're homey. If you're formal normally, then stick to formal, like kind of just stick to your, um, to your brand so people are familiar with that and then they, they're familiar with how you're going to uh, treat them. And when you're doing your product descriptions, always, always itemize exactly what's in it. And if there's something in the picture that's not in it, make sure you say this item not included because you'll get some weirdos that are like, why didn't I get this? And you're like, that's not part of it. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, and like we've talked about photos and she said, just use a tablecloth outside. And honestly, that's, the best advice I can say if you're trying to go bright white background you're gonna have to go with some serious editing and I am a graphic designer and I still struggle every day with my photos because I chose to do everything on bright white backgrounds and it's terrible for editing so honestly choose a background like uh, like a tablecloth uh, and I don't mean like a background like a sheet or, or fancy lighting whatever I use a window too I still use a window to this day that's my favorite thing and a foam board but use something that's textured you can use fabric, you can use textiles, you can use tiles. Use something that isn't just pure white because that will cut your editing time in half for like all your items. Because then you just have to do a little brightness, exposure, lighting, rather than prop the whole thing out, prop, make the background white, like do all that extra editing. It's just going to save you a lot of time and it's, it's going to make your brand actually be more unique. Because the bright white backgrounds, which I do, are just, it's overdone. It's everywhere. Do something that's specific to your brand. Yeah, for Let's like Sophia, time. for you, like I would, I mean, I can't imagine anything more perfect than like a messy drop cloth. Yeah, right. Like that's, I, I mean, miss. I've been into art box. It's, that's what's there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like it, it's, it's used. It's a used, you know, it's an art studio that's used. If you can go to art box and get like one of your tables or like a surface that you have and bring it home, like make yeah, I have my up. I have my I have my apron with me, so that's perfect. My yeah. apron is like yeah. that's super cute. And by the way, regarding <laughs> white backgrounds, quick tip and little thing about white backgrounds. So white backgrounds are really useful if you want to sell on Amazon. Uh, they actually mandate it, um, and there are other times where like that you will be required to give a, a white background. Um, I'm sure most of you know about Canva.com. Yeah. So canva.com. Always for, go for Canva business. <laughs> yeah. So they have the, the, the pro service. They have a background remover that works beautifully. So you upload your photo, you click on the little effects and you click background remover and it, it makes, it gives you your pure white background in seconds. And so for those of you who are considering selling on Amazon, which is a total possibility and it's totally fine, you're going to need the all white background. That's yeah. how you do it on Canva. It works really easy and it lets you do it with the right resolution and stuff. So just a little note on that one. Perfect. Thank you for adding that. Yeah. Canva is a lifesaver. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't shop on Amazon, but I agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually well, have just no, I a shop client on Amazon. That. I just yeah, don't sell on Amazon. <laughs> I had to help. Actually, one of our comadres, Marta, her deck is on Amazon. And we had to oh. remove the background for it to like, they, she tried without it. And we tried like with a white background from the light box. And they're like, nope. No, so it doesn't mean, work. Yeah. Yeah. The canvas is the best way to do it, honestly, if you're going to do Definitely it. It is works. still an extra step that you just, yeah. you know. But it's happen. super quick, super easy. So suggest so that one. But yeah, like go for, you know, keep it simple right now and just work with what you've got. Exactly. Uh, Sophia, would you, uh, is this resonating with you? Is Because um, maybe, uh, I, I'm also curious about what are the things that you are starting to do, like, um, and also what's working, what's not, and, and how do you feel about it? Yes. Well, like this advice has been amazing. It's like everything is resonating with me. The things that have been working because apart from Artbox, I also like 
uh, I also paint. So I exhibit anytime I can, maybe like two or three exhibitions a year. Um, art box is like 90% of my time. So anytime left over. But I thought of putting that to use as well. So what I've been doing is, um, is asking people for their, oh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So I've been, I've been um, selling DIY portrait kits as well. So if you, sell, if you send me your pictures, it could be like text or via social media or email, whatever. I can physically draw it for you, but like in a comic version or like a coloring oh. version, just like black outline. And then I'll send it to you uh, with a watercolor kit. So you don't even have to get your own paint. You don't have to get anything else. Everything just comes to your house like in one kit. And then you can paint it and it's like super easy. And it's like such a fun way to spend a night at home well since we're all stuck at home that's um, incredible that has been going much better than i thought i've already like in the past week or two have sold like 30 or more than 30 which for me is a lot like having to physically mm -hmm. draw them yeah so that that's has been an incredible great. gift too to give to somebody yes and amazing. some people some people have asked like for their friends so they'll ship it to their friends as a surprise and then it's so easy to like get a, fr a picture of a friend and just give it to me. So that like with the whole technology thing is super practical, I think. And, and the whole, the whole setup of it was like really easy. So I think I'm, I'm going to continue doing that. And I have all the supplies here that I need. Um, so yeah, um, it's like, for them, easy for me. Um, I think that's so such an incredible, sorry for interrupting. I think that is such an incredible offer. It's such an amazing uh, product. Um, another, thing is because you're hand drawing them all like you may end up getting overwhelmed very quickly with it when you have a product like that you can do um you can schedule as well so that you can tell people like oh, yeah. i can't necessarily do it this week but maybe next week. like you, you have to maybe put in a schedule for it coming up like if you can still handle it now but if you're getting like 30 a week that's gonna really quickly overwhelm you one you could do a scheduling for it um another one you could do uh oh i had it um, I'll come back to it. But <laughs> another great idea for you is because you're an artist, right? You should be selling your prints. You can uh -huh. sell prints as well of your art. And yeah, that's, 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 a, that's an endless income if it's a print because it's, it's uh, not the original. So you, you'd have um, that as like a digital product, which is right. really good for what you do as well. Right, right. So, Something you mentioned about shipping, um, I've been getting some questions around, is shipping working as always? Is there anything that we need to take into account? Um, so shipping is, is, okay, so domestic shipping is pretty much unhindered. As a matter of fact, I had to go this morning to drop off a ton of packages um, and everything is fine. The post offices are taking precautions. They have their six feet spaces. Um, they have plexiglass in front of their things. Um, they have their masks. They also, most post offices nowadays have like a drop box that you can use after they close um, that you can dump your packages in that are prepaid. So the post offices are open and everything seems to be shipping. I've actually seen the fastest shipping times ever. Um, I've had packages that I shipped and like the next day they're being delivered to Palm Beach from Miami. I was like, okay. So it's, it's fine. International shipping is where we're seeing problems. So there are delays at ports. Um, things are being like, and it's, and that's even that is like iffy. Some countries are a little bit more straight. It depends on the country that it's coming from and all that stuff. But domestic shipping is proceeding perfectly fine. There have been no issues. Um, and I don't think, I know there was like rumors of like some stuff going down last week, but it seems like everything is, is totally fine. And people who work for the post office have been like, no, nope, we're we're good. We're good. Keep going. Keep going. So yeah, everything on okay. that end is, is fine. Okay, great. Um, I want to use the last bit of time that we have because time is flying to talk about promoting your site because you all mentioned how, <clears throat> how critical that is. So um, give me a recommendation. Like what would you do? Like the first steps again, um, how, how do I promote my story if I'm just starting? Or even if I'm not just starting, but when there's so much noise that everybody, yeah, everybody's in front of the computer, but also the ones that are selling are in front of their computer. So what can we do about that? There's two things. There's social, there's three. There's social, there's email, and there's ads. Um, for social, for all three, actually, 
the, I'm going to tell you guys the secret to all of this stuff and it's a secret to everything. It's being consistent <laughs> and doing the work. So for social media, for your email, for your ads, it's all the same and everything in business is the same thing. You've got to come up with a plan and you've got to be consistent and you got to work your plan. So I would do for social media, I would create something that works with your schedule. A lot of us have it right now and just be consistent in your, in your work. So if you're going to do posting two times a day, post two times a day. If it's going to be once a day, post once a day. If you want to show up in your stories, I like people showing up with their face and stories a few times a week. Um, because we're all human beings and we're buying from human beings. And there's a big difference between buying like in a relationship way than buying in a transactional way, right? Especially right now, people want to help each other out. People want to help other people out. So go ahead and show up consistently on your social. That makes a big difference. As soon as you can, if you have an Instagram and a Facebook account and you can connect your catalog on your store to your Instagram, you want to do that so that you can tag your products into your posts. Um, it also allows you, if you do not have 10K followers on Instagram, if you have your catalog connected, it allows you to add swipe ups in your stories to the products that are in your catalog and to your shop in your profile, right? So there's like ways of doing that. So social, that definitely show up consistently, show up often. I know there's a lot of people out there, but it's fine. Like the people who want to hang out with you, who want to see you are going to keep showing up. Um, emails, you guys don't be scared to email. Like I know it feels like it's too much. It's not at least once a week, send emails. Um, if you can spend some time learning how to segment your list, I would, I would dedicate some time to that so that you can figure out who you want to send what to, but at least start emailing at least once a week. And then, ads i mean ads are once you crack the nut on ads like you can get some really great uh, like traffic to your website at really good prices and if you have your pixel your facebook pixel installed it'll capture them and you can retarget them later and it's all like just one big strategy so those are the three little things that like they keep feeding each other and they keep generating each other. And like, that's what you want to do. You just want to keep building that traffic. So those are the three things that, that really help is your social media, your emails and run ads. Beautiful, beautiful, beautifully summarized. Um, Jack, is there anything coming, anything else coming to your mind about promoting your site? Um, again, like I said, with the, like I, everything Madeline said is hundred percent correct. I 100% agree with her. Um, I'm not so good at applying it all the time, um, even though my speciality was online marketing specialist for several years. Um, running my own business is proof that it's much harder um, because as your own owner, you know all the options, all the possibilities. You feel like that imposter syndrome um, quite often. Uh, like she said, don't be afraid to email. I actually rarely, if like never email my list, which is something I'm working on uh, fixing in my business. Um, but one thing I would add to is with all your content, everything stick to your same verbiage, same colors, your branding is very, very important. And it allows your customer to always recognize that it's from you and not random, not from another branch. They'll always recognize you if you're using the same kind of words, the same kind of colors and the same um, like style. Uh, that's, that's what I like to focus on too when I do a lot of my branding because it's, it's really just a recognition. It's like a click in their brain, like, oh, that's from Lauren Lotus. Oh, that's from Artbox, you know, um, cute goods. Like I, I recognize cute goods every time. I was following her before I joined Las Comunadas. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, you have a, like a distinct style and you have to like decide what it is and you have to stick to it throughout all of your platforms all the time. Um, doing exactly the steps that Madeline explained earlier, but then just always focusing on making sure that your brand is distinctly yours and recognizable from other people's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would tell you one little tip for that too, is when you're, especially when you're starting, like Sophia, you're transitioning. Um, this is like a pretty standard marketing tip, so it's worth repeating. Put yourself in like, pick your best client, so like Sophia, who is like the number one person that like supports Artbox, like 
with everything you do, she's like, here, she was like, here, take my money, take my money. And like literally every time you're going to post on social media and you're going to write an email, like put them, like you're talking to them, forget everybody else, forget everybody else. So if it's Amy, you're going to be like, okay, this post is for Amy and this email is dear Amy and like talk to Amy and that's it. Like that will help you stay super consistent in your messaging and it's going to help you communicate to the people you want to communicate and it's going to make it easier to repel the people you don't want anyway. So just, I, that's a really big helpful tip. Just like, remember who's your best customer or who is your ideal customer if you're just starting? Like, so who's the perfect dream customer who you know, like every time like this person shows up, they're gonna throw money at you and talk to them. And just only make sure you them. don't actually write Dear Amy. Right. In email before yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, great, uh, well, um, it went so quickly, but I want to be mindful of your time and it's already time to wrap up. Um, I want to remind everybody that's going to be watching this that even it's, um, sadly we weren't able to do it uh, real time. I'm getting some weird juju's with internet. So every time I'm hosting like internet says, no, we are recording this for later. It's fine. But again, if you, if you are watching and you, and you have questions, you just saw how much information there is. And I know we just, had time to grasp the, the surface. So if you have questions, please ask. Also, your questions will give us ideas on what other topics we should be talking about. <clears throat> I feel that online retail is a huge one right now. Um, and yeah, well, uh, also, um, you'll see on the, on the description of this post, uh, a link for donations. Donations in our case is we are creating all this content because we really want to support everybody that is freaking out right now or that just needs somebody to, to interact with and just know that we are all in the same situation, we are all working through it and we are going to share our knowledge for free. So if this resonated with you, um, we would appreciate uh, the donations for the community or for any of our uh, beautiful speakers today. You, can, you just have to write her names if you want. And I want to thank you all, Jackie, Sophia, Madeleine. Thank you so much for spending this hour with me and with us. Uh, I know it was thank a pleasure. It was, so fun. <laughs> it was fun. I learned a lot. I took a lot of notes. So okay. I learned a lot for sure. Thank you so much. In big bold letters, consistent. Consistency. <laughs> consistency. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's um, Madeline, you're so good at explaining things. Like, one, two, three, like, okay, okay. <laughs> good, good, thank you. Okay, so again, thank you so much. Uh, I will see you around and I hope you are well. Tomorrow we'll have another lunch break, so it will be at noon too. So I hope to see you there. Take right. care. Thank you.